Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Praise the Lord. Wonderful greetings, everyone, in the wonderful name of Jesus. We are here again on a teleconference service. God bless you for joining us. And um, we just want to thank God for this day. This day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Our God is a great God and a great King over all the earth. So we give Him thanks and we give Him praise for His love, His mercy, His goodness, His grace, and all the benefits that we have arrived, derived from His hands. We glorify God because He is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, really you don't know something is good unless you taste it. They said the, ta the, 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 ta the, the taste of the pudding is in the, in the taste, you know, for, <coughs> for us to actually experience what it's like, we have to taste it. So, but we have tasted and we've seen that the Lord is good. Praise the name of the Lord. So thank God we are alive and well, and we are here to give Him the praise and the glory and the honor that is due to His name. We had a wonderful service in Peckham today. God bless the brethren down there and we really enjoy the presence of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God is good and He's greatly to be praised. Um, before we go any further, I'm going to ask Sister Rose to sing a song of us. Give us uh, just a little prayer. Sing a prayer. I say a prayer for us before we start. Praise the Lord. Father, I give you thanks and I give you the praise. Amen. I give you the glory, I give you the honor. Amen. Thank you for this Saturday. And I pray that you bless everyone that's on here. Amen. And all those that are planning to come on here, Lord. I pray that you cover them with your anointing grace. I pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Yes. Also pray, Lord, that you continue to just touch Sister P.T. and her family. Be their comforter at this time as, as she has lost her mother, Amen. Lord. I pray that your arms will be stretched open wide Amen. to comfort them in this time. Lord, I give you thanks and praise. I pray that everything that the speaker is going to say to tonight, Lord, that will be from the scriptures. And we will not just leave this um, teleconference tonight the same way, but we will take heed to the word from the messenger. Lord, I give you thanks and I give you the praise and the total glory and the honor through Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Rose. Thank you for that. God is good and he's he is worthy of our praises. Praise the name of the Lord. Today I want to look at a scripture taken from um, Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. A very interesting scripture came to me um, recently about, you know, Jacob and Esau. You know, um, it's, a, it's a great story way back in the days when Isaac had two sons and um, they were both twins but Esau was the firstborn and after came Jacob but we see how God had told Rebecca Isaac's wife that when she was to have a child that two nations two nations in that womb and the youngest shall rule over the elder and normally in most cases the elder is always the one who rules over the younger but God told Rebecca that it wouldn't be that way it would be the other way around so we see Esau was first birth then came Jacob's and then Esau should have inherited the blessing. But as we know, we read the scripture how he actually sold his birthright. A very foolish thing he did. 
your birthright is what you know what make you give is is actually the blessing your birthright is your blessing so Esau should have inherit inherited the birthright but we know the story if we remember the story well Esau went out hunting one day he went out hunting he came back from the hunting he was exhausted he was very hungry Jacob was at home cooking as they call it pottage which I imagine some kind of soup and Esau was so very hungry that he said give me some of that pottage and Jacob says sell me your birthright sell me I give you pottage you give me a birthright I give you pottage and Esau says what good imagine that what good is my birthright what good is it to me if I starve you see thing is that some people think more about their physical body than they think about the spiritual one and that was the problem with Esau he was thinking more about his physical well-being and not his spiritual well-being so he swore unto Jacob that if Jacob gave him some pottage he would give in turn Jacob his birthright and that was his folly that was his folly so we see what happened that um, when the time came when Isaac was to bless his children before his departure from this earth that um, Jacob went first disguised himself as Esau and when Isaac felt Jacob because he made himself Esau was a hairy man so Jacob made himself hairy and then he felt Esau's hand and he said, he felt Jacob's hand and he said, this is the hand of Esau. But he said, this voice is the voice of Jacob. <laughs> Nevertheless, he blessed Jacob. And Jacob received the blessing. After he blessed Jacob, came in Esau for his blessing. My Lord. When Esau came to Isaac for his blessing, Isaac said, Isaac said, Who art thou? Who are you? Because Isaac obviously was blind. He couldn't see. So Esau said to Isaac, I am I am I Esau, your firstborn. <laughs> then Isaac realized that he did not bless Esau but he blessed Jacob but it was too late it was too late some people make some mistakes in life where you can't reverse unreversible mistakes and this was Esau he made such a great blunder that it was unreserv unreserv unreversible sold his birthright for some pottage, some soup, something like that, to fill his stomach. He sold his birthright, his, her his God-given heritage, he sold it. But you know, God is wise and God knew that this thing would come to pass. So God had foretell Rebecca that the younger shall rule over the older and so we know the story well after uh, after that Esau become very angry and he was wroth with Jacob in fact he wanted to kill Jacob but Jacob ran away 
he ran away. They said a man that runs away lives to fight another day. So Jacob ran away. And after this, Jacob wanted to make peace with his brother. Years after, Jacob wanted to make peace with his brother. So I'm going to read a story taken from Genesis 32. It says, And Jacob went on his way, and the angel of the Lord met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of the place Mahayim. And Jacob sent messenger before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Sir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall he speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant David Jacob said thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there till now. I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servant, women servant, and have sent to tell thee, my lord, if I find grace in thy sight. And the messenger returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and he also met thee, four hundred men with him. And Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and divided the people that was with him, and the flock, and the herd, and the camels, and the two bands, and said, if Esau come to the comp one company and smite it, then the other company is left, shall escape. So we see after Lee running away for his life from Esau for many years, he said he wanted to come back to make peace with his brother. So he, he sojourned with Laban, I think it was his uncle, for a while. After years, he said, I will return, he said. And he returned to make peace with Esau. And he sent his servant to say to Esau, I have oxen and asses, flocks, men servant, women servant. And I've sent to tell thee that if I find grace in thy sight. So Jacob was lit, putting out an olive branch towards Esau. And when the messenger came back and saw Esau and said they met with Esau, he had 400 men. Esau had an old arm, a whole army. Jacob had just a few. And David, Jacob was really troubled and the Bible said he was greatly afraid in verse 7. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed because can you imagine the, uh, the big whole, the, the amount of horsemen that um, Esau had against his few. He was outnumbered. So he was greatly afraid and distressed. And he says he divided his people. So he divided his people into two sets. So he said, if Esau come and catch one, one and destroy one, we'll have one saved. So he was greatly distressed, greatly distressed. But you know what? Sometimes when we find ourselves in this situation, we must remember that God is in control. And God has already made a way. And God has maybe has opened, touched Esau's heart. You know, that he would not be angry with Jacob after all these years. And so God can do that. God can, the Bible says, if our ways please the Lord, he will make even our enemies at peace with us. That's the God we serve. 
the God we serve can change the mind of our enemy to our favor. That's the God, because he is God. And there's nothing impossible for him to do. So Jacob was greatly distressed and afraid and divided all that he had in two sections. So, but, you know, it says, and Jacob said, so one thing is good, even though he was greatly afraid and distressed, he remembered his God. He remembered his father. He remembered God. He remembered his father. He, he remembered the promises of God. So when he divided them, he said, he called upon God. And sometimes when we are in a way that we may feel highly distressed or afraid, we must remember also to call upon God. And God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. And Jacob said, call upon God. He said, O oh God of my father Abraham, the God of Isaac, my father Isaac, the, the Lord that said unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. So Jacob heard the voice of God says, return unto your country, return unto your kindred, return unto your brother, and I will deal well with thee. Sometimes we must always remember the promises of God and the word of God. When God said, I, when Jesus said to his disciples, I will be with you always, always, even unto the end of this world. Those promises we must hold dearly. So if any time we have distress or we have a need or we have a problem, we remember to call upon God even as Jacob called upon God. He identified God. Oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said to me, return unto thy country, unto thy kindred, and I will deal with well with thee. I will hold on to your promise. Jacob was saying, I, oh, I believe I will hold on to your promise. And he went on to say, I am not worthy of least of all thy mercies. Humility. You know, sometimes we talk about these patriots and prophets. And we, we, we should read through the lines to see the type of person they were. See the type of person Abraham was. See the type of person Isaac was. It is there in between the lines. Humility was in the prior of Jacob to God. And when we call upon God, remember to be humble. The, Jacob said, I am not worthy of at least of all thy mercy. I'm not worthy. When we call upon God, we should say, I'm not worthy. I am not worthy. We are not worthy of the least of all thy mercies and all thy truth, which thou hast shown unto thy servant. We are not worthy of the blessings. We are not worthy of his grace. We are not worthy of his tender mercies and his loving kindness. We are not worthy. And so, Jacob said to God, I'm not worthy of least of all thy mercies and all thy truth, which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I pass over Jordan, and now I am two bands. Now after he has lifted up God, and praised God, and humbled himself, he made his petition to God. And in verse 11, he said, deliver me, I pray. Sometimes we come to God and we just ask, God, do this for me. God, do that for me. Oh, God, I need this. I need that. What about, Lord, I love you. 
Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I am not worthy of your blessings. I am not worthy of your mercies. How about that? Before we start, oh God, I need this. I need that. Oh God, deliver me from this. Deliver me from that. How about doing it the way Jacob did it? Oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, we say to me, return unto thy country and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of thee. At least I am not worthy of the least of all thy mercies and all thy truth that thou hast shown unto thy servant, shown unto me. And then he went on to say, deliver me, I pray. You know, the, the, the power of prayer is the approach. The power of prayer is the approach. How we approach God. That's the power of prayer. The approach. And we see how Jacob approached God with humility, exalting him. And, hum and humbling himself. And then he said, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, because I fear him. Lest he come and smite me and my mother with the children. When we pray this way, God answers. God will answer. And we have assurance that he hears and he will answer because we are approaching him in the right way. He said, Thou says, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude. God has made that promise to Abraham. I have made I will surely, this is it, you know, if God says to me, says to you, I will surely do the good. Hallelujah. There's nothing else in the world that we could ask for. And he said that to Abraham, and we are the seed of Abraham. He said, I will surely do the good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered. How great is that? That promise that God made to his servant Abraham. And when we think about Abraham, Abraham was not just a man. He was a man of God. Abraham had the heart of God. Abraham had love in his heart. Abraham was a peacemaker. Abraham was a righteous man. We can't say that we are children of Abraham through faith if we do not possess the qualities that Abraham possessed. We cannot say that. We have to see these patriots and prophets and see the the the, the power that they possess through their righteousness, through their holiness, through their love for God, through their servitude, how they serve God, to through their humility. So they're going on, verse 13, he lodged there for the night and took of that which came to his hand as a present for Esau, his brother. So here he took, he took for a present, a peace offering to Esau. So he took 200 she-goats and 20 he-goats, 200 eaves and 20 rams, 30 milk camel and their cloth, 40 kine, 10 bulls, 20 she asses, 
and ten fowls and deliver them into the hands of his servant which drove by themselves every, every drove by themselves and said unto his servant pass over before me and put this space between doves and doves and he commanded foremost saying when Esau my brother meeted me and asked these saying whose are these and whether thou goest and whose are these before thee thou shalt say thy brother by thy servant Jacob is a present is a present it is a present sent to my Lord Esau and behold also he's behind us hallelujah so he, Jacob was still a bit terrified of him meeting Esau he didn't just want to meet Esau just like that he sent all these gifts with his servant 200 she, she goats and 20 he goats and all those ills and eaves and rams and kine and bull and she asses and fowls and everything. He sent a great hall in front of him for Esau to make peace with his brother. And said, when, you, when Esau asks, what, what are these for? Thou shalt say, it's thy servant Jacob. It is a present unto my Lord Esau. And behold, also he is behind us. And also, and so commanded he the second and the third, and they followed the Jews, saying, At this manner shall thou speak when thou find him. So Jacob was trying everything to make peace with Esau. Oh, praise God. Praise God. And it says, Say, in verse 20, it says, Say he moreover. Behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that go before me. So Jacob was saying, I will appease my brother with all these gifts of all these animals. I will appease him. I will soften his heart. But God had already softened Esau's heart. God had already softened Esau's heart. And he said, I will appease him with the present that go before me. Afterwards, I will see his face, peradventure, he will accept me. Oh, praise. You see, sometimes we have to go out our way, you know, for, to make peace. And this is why I'm saying, when we think about these patriots and prophets, they were peacemakers. Jacob was a peacemaker. Look at the great sacrifice. Look at all he bought to make peace with his brother. Look at the great hall. All those animals that he bought to make peace with his brother. What a great sacrifice just to make peace. And so he says, verse 21, he went with the presence over before him and himself lodged by night in his company so he sent all those gifts and he was praying that god touch his heart touch my brother esau's heart you know when when you know because jacob was a man of love he loved his brother esau even though he stole his birthright but it was predicted it was you know it was prophesied that he would god told um, rebecca that that it wouldn't be the same that that would be the case. And so he, he was just fulfilling what God actually told his mother would be that the younger shall rule over the oldest. And he went, so in verse 22 he says, And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his woman servant and his eleven sons and pass over the ford Jabuk and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent and sent over that he had 
and Jacob was left alone. So he sent all his children over the book. And the Bible says he was left alone. Sometimes it's good to be alone with God. Sometimes it is wonderful. Sometimes it is awesome to be alone with God. The Bible says he was left alone. Great things happen to us when we are alone with God. Mighty things when we are alone with God. Jacob was left alone after he prayed, after he sent over all that he had to Esau to make as a peace offering. He was left alone. And the Bible tells us in verse 24 that he wrestled with a man until the break of day. He wrestled with a man until the break of day. When we need something, we have to fight for it. Jacob needed a blessing. Jacob needed something that he could not provide for himself. He needed an anointing. He needed the presence of God in his life. And he wrestled with a man. It was an angel. He wrestled with an angel. He said, I hold on to you. I need my blessing. I need my deliverance. I need my victory. I will not let you go. And sometimes in life when we need something from God, let us hold on to him. Let us keep calling on him. Let us keep crying to him. Let us keep looking to him. And Jacob was left alone, and there he wrestled with a man until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, so he wrestled so much with the angel, and he, he said, he, in, in scripture he says, he says, he wrestled with him. And when he saw that he could not prevail, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of thigh was out of joint. So the angel had to touch him somewhere where he feels it so he could let him go. And he wrestled still. This is a touch him somewhere where we feel some pain to release him but he wrestled still and he wrestled on we must wrestle on we must wrestle on Jacob wrestled on wrestle on never give up hold on fight on and he said the angel said, let me go for the day, break it. Hallelujah. The angel said, let me go for the day, break it. And he said, Jacob said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? Hallelujah. And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall no longer more, no more be Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God, and with men thou hast prevailed. Oh, praise God. You see the favors we get from God, if we hold on to him. You see the blessings we get from God? If we just show him love, if we show him the praise, if we show him the honor that is due unto him. You see the blessing? And if we hold on to him and say, I will not let you go, God. Lord, I will not let you go. I will not stop praising you. I will not stop lifting up your name. I will not stop glorifying you. I will hang on to you. No matter what, I will hang on to you. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. 
God will bless us more abundantly above what we can think or ask. God will open the windows of heaven for us when we serve him in spirit and in truth. He said, Thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. And this is where Israel comes from, because as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy, thy name. And he says, Wherefore is it that thou asks after my name? And he blessed him there. Hallelujah. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Praise the name of the Lord. The moral of this story, brethren, is that whatever we do, don't let go of Jesus. In this world, there's so much distraction going on. We are distracted here on the right and on the left. There's so much going on around us. There's so much confusion. There's so much misguided ever, misguidance. Everywhere you look, we are misguided. The only sure light we have is in the Word of God. And that's what we should hold on to, the Word of God. He passed over Peniel and the sun rose up. And he halted upon his thigh. God touched his thigh. He fought so hard with God. He prevailed with God. And brethren, we have to prevail. We will prevail. God has a blessing for us. Now, the name Jacob might have been forgotten, but the name Israel. Israel came from a man named Jacob who wrestled with God. When I say wrestling, he held on to God. He met God and he held on to him. He held on to him. He wrestled with him. He wanted something. There's nothing. Nothing comes easy. We have to fight. We have to struggle. But God is able. God is able to bless us. God is able. So he inherited that name. Israel. Because he wrestled with God. He fought with God. And we see how God blessed him. Bless him, he had 12 sons. And we know all about his sons. And we know about Joseph. Joseph was a son that went down to Egypt. He, didn't, he was sold into bondage. We know the story well. How his brother didn't like him. Because he had the dream that, you know, his, the, the, the sun and the moon bowed down before him. And all his brothers was bowing before him and they were jealous. And they show him in a pit. And then Reuben asked them, better you sell him to the Amalekites. Amal Amalekites. And so they sold him into slavery. And we see the story well. How God dealt with him. How God made him ruler over Egypt. Because God can make us great. God can make us. We are kings and priests in his, in, to him. We are not just. Once we love God, we serve God and we give our life to God. We are kings and priests before him. And imagine the power of a king, a prince, or, you know, a priest. Imagine the power. God has made us powerful. God has made us great. So we see how God blessed Jacob because Jacob was willing 
to hold on to God, the angel. He wrestled with the angel. He prevailed. He would not let that angel go until he received the blessing. Bridging whatever we need from God, whether it's deliverance, healing, prov providence, whatever we need, don't let him go until he, he said, what do you want? What do you want? And I think about Elijah and Elisha. When Elijah was about to be taken up with a whirlwind, and when he tried everything to tell Elisha, stay here because the Lord has sent me on. And Elisha knew that Elijah was going to be taken. And every time Elisha tried to prevent Elijah from following him, he says, as thy soul liveth, and as the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. Persistency gets blessings. God wants persistency. And many of the scripture we read shows us how persist persistency towards God gets so much blessing. And we talk about Ruth and Naomi, how when they, Ruth went down to Moab and you know he lost his children and his daughter-in-law was there and she wanted to follow him and she, Naomi tried everything to say, tell you, don't go, I don't have, I can't give you another son, my son is dead, I can't, you know, go stay with your people. And Ruth said, no, where you, where you are, your people shall be my people, your God shall be my God. And wherever you die, there I should die also. Persistency, brethren, persistency gets us the blessing. Gets us the blessing. We can't go halfway. We have to go all the way. God is an all the way God. And we see how Jacob received the blessing because he held on. He held on and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What we need from God, we will receive. What we ask of God, we will receive. And then I went back to say the way we approach God in prayer, it's very important for our blessings. It is very important our approach to God to receive our blessing. And if I, if I may say, if we read, if we read on, when... Jacob actually met his brother Esau. His brother Esau said, Why bring all these, uh, all these gifts for me? I don't need them. <laughs> I don't need them. It tells me that God had already converted Esau's heart towards Jacob. He said, I don't need them. So it's not the gift that Jacob gave to Esau that brought them together. But it's the love of God that God touched the heart of Esau and he was reconciled with his brother. What a great God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. And we should give him endless praises. Endless praises for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. God bless you, my brethren. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to, uh, praise the Lord, ask, um, Pastor Winston, God bless you. God bless you, uh, God bless you, sir. Well, welcome, sir. I just, maybe just give us a few words of encouragement before we close off. Um, you're a man of God, man of faith, and you know, when I talk about Jacob and holding on, I see as a present-day Jacob. I see as a present-day Jacob, and you yeah. will... The blessings is coming. The blessings is coming. Yeah, I received that. I received that. Amen. It. Amen. Amen. Greeting, dear one. Greeting. Greetings, sir. Greetings. In the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad to be on this platform tonight. Greetings. First lady, greetings. I'm so glad to be on this platform Amen. tonight. Amen. Glad to have you. Psalm 63. Verse 3, 
and six. Because of the loving kindness, it's better than life. Oh, my Lord. And my lips shall praise thee. Verse six. When I remember thee upon my bed and my tail and thee in the night, what midnight watch. Because of the loving kindness. God is so kind. Yes. God is so loving. Yes. God is pure. It's better than life. Amen. Everything to me today and tonight. I never ever stop serving him. You know what he has done for me? How can I stop praising my God? Amen. How can I stop blessing his name? How can I stop spreading good news? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I stop. In the midnight watch, when I was sleeping, I'm still praying and praising. That's my life. That's my joy. That's what made me, that's what made me happy. Yes. Me peace. So if you are peace in your soul, just keep on praising your God. Keep on lifting him up. And keep on exalting your name. Because I got America. You got a healing. Yes. You can see Jesus himself. Spot on the ground with his picker, spitter, and make it to clay. Yes. And wipe it and high. And say, go wash in the pool outside the home. Go wash. The thing you need today, I'll give us to give it to you. And he shall give the best thing you want. The best thing. Yes, he will. And say, go wash in the pool of Zalo. And he's crying the fire, he started to cut his eye. Who did that? How can you pass right here to such a miracle and stop at the end? So what they're trying to say, he just break it down. So he must eat clean water and stop right there. But you see Jesus, God is God. So he can do anything he wants at any time. Jesus is holy. Yes, he is. Awesome. He's a wonderful contract. The Prince of Peace. My God is awesome. So he said, young man, go watch. So he went there when he cried. Come on, he went out his parents. His parents said, ask him. He's afraid. Ask him. Let him tell you. Okay, let him tell you. Who did? And the young man said, One thing I know, I don't know if I've seen an hour. One day, no. One day, I was blind. And now I can see. And I was blind when I can't see. We can't all say that tonight. Virgin. So once was in darkness, going towards hell, going the wrong road. Go on the wrong road to hell. But Jesus Christ has not touched me, has touched you. And help us go wash. So, whatever we need, just can be for us, brethren. Whatever you want, it can be for you. Just believe by faith. Everyone was not afraid. The man of the nation. It was the awful only son to be sacrificed. And God will provide a lamb for burnt offering. So God will provide. Yes. But the way he let's give away everything to Jesus. Well, first and foremost, he must give heart to Jesus. Even when he's into that, not saved. Give it to give it to Jesus. He shall, he will bless you. He shall strengthen you. He shall empower you with fire from above. The Holy Holy fire that live with me and you. The anointing that break every demon out of the way. That's can enemies. Can a darkness. Can the darkness everywhere. Well, look at what's going on in the world today. Can the darkness be a dark time. Pilot's time. America kept to be a super king supplying equipment to Ukraine. I did money making. 
Yeah. Make king. The more. Amen. You don't want me to be king, I just understand how it is now. Mr. Tom just explained to me, I just got in. Can somebody send me a video of what's going on? You see how money making? Yes. You know, the man the dark, and light. But we, we are the light. And we are the Jesus. Because Jesus is the light of the world. He come to seek and to save. The abuse are lost. And set us free. He saved me, washed me. I get that attack that from the devil. I show. And doctor say, I won't turn again. Hallelujah. Amen. I won't turn again. I won't walk again. But Jesus Christ, I'm not done. Push it down upon me. Touch me. And say, go wash. That my view was in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Winston. Um, Pastor Winston, why are you there? One of us, one of our listeners always join us. I lost her mother, so I'm going to ask you to have a short prayer, closing prayer, and pray for a PT's family of PT, and uh, uh, they've lost their mother. I think she's over 90 years old, and she's right. passed on, and I know the family is still grieving. So I'm asking you to pray for one of our sisters on this teleconference. Her name is PT in the family. Just pray for the family, please, and then close us. Hey, Father, we thank you. Amen. Hey, Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for this group. Yes. Thank you for this family. They lost their loved ones. Sympathy go to them, Lord. Mm. But we don't want what they shall become with them. Lord, you gave life, and you take life away. Lord, you gave a problem. And you said, in your word, a time to burn. Time to die. And we never come to this world by ourselves. You want to see into this world. And the time has come when they have taken my home to mm. the glory. And for not to worry about it, Lord. And for not to worry, you are strength in a time of bereavement, Lord. Remind her, Lord, that you are still there. And she must still love you. Mm. She must still love you, because you are gone. And you gave life, you take away. Come and say, she, she, she should not die. When I say, I time to burn. Time to die. I time to sow, I time to weep. Yes. There are times when she do everything on this world, in this world. That they are called home to us, Lord. Our time has ended. We are not born to die to live again. And you have to die one day. Leave this world, world to a different world. But those that are behind, let's be called on Jesus. Let's love the Lord and serve him. And when you're ready to call us home, and you come back, Lord, in this world, you can say, well done, we are faithful to serve him. Mm. You, you are on the way that you keep the faith. Strengthen your family all this time. Come with your heart at this time. Yeah. And Lord, and then not to worry. Because we life go. Everyone have lost someone. Hmm. Someone some stayed. It's a part of life. Yes. And not about it. We can't do nothing about it. Because we don't wish for ourselves in this world. Can I pray here? And God call us when we're ready. Hallelujah. We we'll pray right now. We must send the angel to care for all the family. Yeah. And pay the finance to bury our Lord. Cash from the east, from the west, north, from the south. And give to your family. Give to your family. Then they will do what they have to do. I don't know, Lord, but I'm praying now. Because you said, you're your brother, your brother's keeper. And thank for the platform. Thank for the salvation. Thank for the salvation, salvation, trophy. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ, my Lord. I love you so much with a grateful heart. When I tell you, 
Your precious God. I love you so much. See, I love you because you first love me. Pepper the Thompson, I first lady, tell me what's Amen. When it down, when it rises up. In Jesus' name, I know all about it. I'm going to my voice.